and welcome to Tasha Tuesday. Now I have been to Disney quite a lot and while you are watching this I am currently over there working. So today I thought it would be really fun to go through how to survive a Disney park. Now for the purpose of this video in particular I'm just going to be using Magic Kingdom as an example as that is probably the most popular park. And for those of you who are really new that's the one with the big castle. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to check the crowds for the time of year that you want to go. This will give you an indication for like how busy it is on any given day. I will leave a link in the description below for the website that I use to check crowd levels. So 10 being the most busy and 1 being not very busy at all. Now remember this is just an indicator. Things like weather and events run by Disney can like alter these but it's a good base level indication that gives you like a rough idea for what kind of crowd level you're in for for the day that you want to go. So second is tickets. I would recommend buying your tickets online and then going to redeem them in the park the day before you want to go use them. That way on the day that you are going into the park you don't have to wait, waste a whole bunch of time waiting in the line for your ticket. I would also recommend you getting a magic band. So this essentially becomes your ticket. It'll get you into the park get you your photo of like do the photo pass and also be your fast pass for the day. And it's just a whole bunch easier so you don't have to grab your like um, ticket out of in and out of your bag the whole time. And you can get like whatever colour you want. They've got a magnitude of rainbow colours and they also have like prints on them for like special editions. So lots of different choices for like everybody. Next is fast passes. You can book fast passes for rides 30 days before if you are staying off site and 60 days before if you are staying on site. Um, you can book up to three beforehand and then once you've used those three up on the day you're in the park, you can keep booking one more in advance. So I would recommend for Magic Kingdom doing my Diamond Minecart because that is very popular at the moment. I would also recommend doing Peter Pan because it is a Disney classic. And then for your third one, I would either do Dumbo's Flying Elephants because it's another classic or Space Mountain and this one really depends on if your family are more into classic Disney rides or if they are into roller coasters. And just a side note, if you want to eat in one of the parks you can book this 180 days before your actual trip. I would do some research first to try and figure out which place best suits your like tastes of food and everything. I will leave a link in the description below. Um, by Disney Food Blog who goes through a list of all of like the different restaurants like the differences between them Don't fuss too much if you are desperate to get one of the like high-end signature restaurants I would definitely recommend booking 180 days before but Disney always ends up leaving a couple of like walk-in tables available So if you go one morning actually we do want to eat at the sushi place in Epcot Go in there in the morning be like hey do you have a table and they usually have a couple free just like sporadically throughout the day as well. Right, so you have everything booked and planned. Now you just need to make sure you have everything you need to bring into the park. I would recommend wearing comfortable shoes. Magic Kingdom is a huge park and you'll be doing a lot of walking between rides. So I would recommend wearing shoes that you are comfortable walking in for a long time. So sneakers are always a good option, but if you have like Converse or anything that you know that your feet will be comfortable in for the whole day, I would wear those. So I would also recommend bringing water, a hat, sunscreen, a poncho, especially if you're going between December and February when it is most likely to rain. Um, I would also bring some snacks as well and obviously like money in your tickets but those bits are a given. This is a whole other video that I could do and might do about what to bring into the park but those are kind of like the bare essentials and basics that you'll need to survive. Next is to check park opening hours and magic hours for the park that you want to go in today. So for Magic Kingdom, if it opens at 9 and you, you must get there early, and I don't mean 8.55 early, I mean a minimum half an hour early because you need to get from the car park or hotel that you're staying at on property to Magic Kingdom, go through security and then get in line to go in. Usually Disney will let you in through the first gates um, into the park early and then you'll be like waiting out there for rope drop which is when all the rides officially open. In, open. Um, at this point people usually do a runner to the most popular rides which is why you need to get there early because if you get there early and you're at the front of rope drop you can like do a mad dash run and you won't have to wait in such a long line for Diamond Minecart or Space Mountain or stuff like that. 
Right, so now you are all ready for your day at Magic Kingdom. My last bit of advice for you is to start from the back of the park because the crowds move front to back. So all of the rides at the back should theoretically have less lines and you can work your way forward. My second bit of advice is if a ride has two lines that split, for example, um, Pirates of the Caribbean and there's a right and left lane, go into the left one. Americans, out of habit, always go to the right lane, so the left one will be just that little bit shorter. So that is how I would tackle getting ready for Disney World's Magic Kingdom. I will leave in the description below um, a video by Trip Planner who will talk about inside the actual park and what one like what rides they recommend getting fast passes for, or like which direction and like map out a path for like how to tackle the day inside the park best. Let me know in the comments below which of the four parks or water parks your favourite one at Disney World is. Mine is a split between Magic Kingdom and Epcot. Um, if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new here, click that red subscribe button because I post videos every Tuesday. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you all next week. Bye!